We are so thankful that you're joining us for Talk It Over, and we are, I'm just overwhelmed as I get the reports of the good things God is doing through these groups, and I'm, I'm really, really appreciative of each and every one of you for supporting this and spending time listening to each other, and I love to hear how God is, uh, is stirring your hearts and bringing you to, uh, to new places of faith as you reflect on God's Word. So today, I want to start out with the theme or the main idea of our conversation. And it's a simple one, that sometimes, sometimes not all the time, but sometimes good things come out of bad circumstances. Uh, Seems counterintuitive. It doesn't seem like the kind of thing that we should expect when we encounter a bad circumstance. But Scripture says that we can expect that as long as we have faith in Jesus and recognize the character and nature of who God is. Now, here's the question that I want you to think about to start our conversation. The question is simple. What will be the outcome when when bad things happen to you? Now, it seems strange to to ask a question about what will be the outcome uh, when it does feel sometimes that life just just takes us wherever life goes, that we don't actually have an option or an opportunity to decide where we will go. But Scripture actually, again, tells us that with Jesus, that there is an opportunity for good to arise. And as a result, that we can actually look at every bad circumstance or bad experience of our life. And we can, the minute we we have that bad experience, we can know that God has the power to bring good things out of that. It's an amazing reaction. Uh, a lot of people have a different reaction when they have bad things happen. I tend to uh, have profanities, not a lot of them, but just a little come out of my mouth if it's a really bad thing or, or in my mind, I, I won't have necessarily say them, but, but, but uh, what I'm saying is there, there's a negative place that our brain goes to. The scripture actually says that your brain, that your mind can go to a positive place when you have a bad thing happen because you know what God has the potential and power to do in those times. This is a great picture of the Cleaver family, and they had a backyard camping experience because they can't go camping in the woods. They took a bad situation and made it really good, filmed a lot of great movies. They posted it all over the internet, and so many people in our community are laughing and having fun looking at those videos. They have taken something that was a bad experience, and they responded in a—they showed their kids, in fact, how to respond in a different way. And God, we can give credit to God for this, God has brought a smile to their face when otherwise uh, they probably wouldn't have any reason to have a smile. This is, a, this is the question I'd like you to talk to one another about. Spend some time, listen to each other. Has any good come from the bad things that have happened to you this past week? Think about the bad things that have happened, simple things. And I'm not talking about your whole entire life, but just this past week. And is there any good anything that has come of those bad experiences and reflect on, um, on them with as much specificity as you can and think about how, how God is doing that because we know that all good things come from God. What is God doing uh, that is good as a result of the bad things that you've experienced the past week? Have that conversation right now. Okay, now that you've had that conversation, I want you to read this scripture from Romans 5.1. Take a minute, read it together. Uh, if you have multiple translations, read it in the different translations and see how they differ and vary and try to get the richness of that verse as you read it as a group. So this is a way of phrasing or reframing what has been said in that verse. And it's simple. The greatest and truest sign of hope is the faithfulness of Jesus. The greatest and truest sign of hope is the faithfulness of Jesus. That when you uh, feel that your faith is not strong and you feel that your faith is weak, which is definitely going to be true in all of our lives at different times, you can look to the faithfulness of Jesus and you can recognize it gives, you, it gives you not just hope, but that hope gives you power and it gives you renewed purpose and it gives you strength to move forward. And that's why it's the greatest and truest sign of hope. Here's the question I want you guys to talk about and to discuss it as you discuss this idea. How do you experience peace like the scripture talks about? Peace, knowing that you don't have to accomplish or earn your place with God, that it's there because of grace. How, how do you have peace about those things? Um, and has there ever even been 
a time in your life where you thought you had to earn your way into God's goodness. Uh, and this scripture or another scripture like it has helped you realize something new about uh, the difference between uh, experiencing peace, um, trying to experience peace by earning your way into God's goodness versus recognizing that Jesus through his faithfulness, his faithfulness has already accomplished that for you. Talk about that with each other. Now I want you to read Romans 5, chapter 5, verse 2 through 4 as a group. This is an interesting scripture. It's basically saying that because of Jesus, even our problems produce hope. Uh, the, the scripture puts forth what I'd like to say is an equation. Uh, it's a simple equation. And now your, your translations might say suffering or troubles or pain, depending on which Bible you're reading. But the equation that comes from the Bible that I'm reading today uh, says that uh, where there is trouble, trouble produces endurance. Endurance then produces character, and character then produces hope. Another way of thinking about this is that with Jesus, uh, our tough times are a hope factory. Just like all those manufacturing jobs or returning to the United States, it's too slow. We don't want to see them uh, coming back any any slower than they are, but uh, people want to see manufacturing of Teslas, of, of goods and services. Um, and, uh, but, but the real thing that God is doing right now is manufacturing hope. He's really bringing about hope in the lives of people everywhere, and he's doing it through the tough times. Uh, I'd like you to talk about uh, this dynamic between hope and difficult times, and here's, here's a way to think about it and, and, and to frame the question. What is your natural emotional reaction to tough times? How do you normally respond when tough times happen in your life? For example, do you feel hopeful when tough times take place in your life? Do you find yourself being filled with joy when tough times happen? Or do you find yourself, as some do, withdrawing, uh, pulling away, uh, spending time by yourself, Everybody has a different way they respond, and that's why I think it's interesting for everyone, if you can, in this conversation to go around and talk about how, how you respond. What's your natural, not necessarily the one that uh, comes from God even, but what's the one that, one's the, what's the knee-jerk one, the natural reaction, uh, emotional reaction to tough times? Have that conversation. Great. Now I want you to read Romans 5, chapter 5, verse Five. What an amazing way to think about what God is doing in our life. That God's love is being poured into our life. God's love is being poured into our hearts. And that is the evidence that our hope is strong. I love this, this imagery. I love the way that the Bible here talks about the Spirit of God and how the Spirit uh, evidences the hope so that we don't feel embarrassed. Have you ever felt embarrassed uh, by, uh, by something that seemed hopeful to you? Um, for example, maybe you've met somebody in your life and you thought there was going to be a romantic relationship with that person and you were going you know, into that relationship, expecting one thing, and you were totally embarrassed because maybe, maybe you uh, broached the subject with them. Uh, another example is when I was a kid, I found fool's gold when I was camping with my family, and I felt so embarrassed because that hope was just, was just nonsense. It wasn't real that I'd struck gold. Uh, how in your life uh, have you experienced those things? And, and, um, and, recognize that God's love poured into your heart is, is what makes uh, the hope um, that we have in Jesus Christ, it makes that hope not an embarrassing thing, but instead something we can be really proud of. Here's a question for you. How does God's love in your heart change the hope you have from a fool, I should say, from a fool's hope to a real hope? How is it that God is doing that? And I, I, know that, um, I, I know that each of you are going to have a different perspective on this. So talk about how God does that to change it from a fool's hope to a real hope in your life. Let's read now 
Romans uh, chapter 5, verse 6 through 8 as a group. Okay. Think of it this way. The greatest, greatest sign of hope is Jesus' willingness to die for you when you were at your worst. Wow. I don't know about you, but when I think about the worst things I've done or thought or said in my life, and I really take my place, myself to that place and recognize that Jesus died for me when I was at my worst, I just am so humbled by it. That it's not because of my goodness that Jesus died for me. It's not because I was more valuable or, or more kind or more compassionate than anybody else. Jesus died for me in my worst condition, the worst version of myself. Jesus died for me. What an amazing thought to, to, to allow sink in, or as the scripture says, to be poured into our hearts during this time as a group. Talk about your tough times and what it means to you that Jesus died for you when you were at your worst. Have an opportunity. Think about that. What does it mean to you that Jesus died for you when you were at your worst? Okay, read Romans 5, 9 through 11 as a group together. Here we have a, a vision of a restored relationship. And, and the scripture is saying that our restored relationship with God makes us a sign of hope for others. Uh, that's what I believe it's implying. That the relationship, the restored relationship of God is not just the end in and of itself, but it's actually drawing us into a place where we, we become the living hope for those in our life. What are some ways that you can demonstrate or, or, um, or exemplify or embody, another way of putting it, embody your restored relationship with God and be a sign of hope to others. The scripture doesn't talk about a restored relationship you will have with God. It actually says a restored relationship that you now have with God, that God has restored that relationship and God has renewed that relationship through Jesus Christ. And so now I want you to talk about that. How are you going to live out that restored relationship so that the people in your life, they can actually be drawn into this wonderful relationship that you have uh, in their life too, and that they can experience a life where their trouble produces endurance, endurance produces character, and character produces hope. Talk about, talk about the ways, come up with ideas, real ones, where you will be able to live this out in the next week. All right, that's a good conversation. And I hope that you enjoyed this time together. Now is the time for you guys to pray. It's time for you to praise God. Reflect on the good things that God has done in your conversation today. Reflect on the good things that God has done in your life over the past week. And then petition. Make sure that you ask God, lift up to God those concerns. So collect those praises as a group, shout them out, share them with one another. Ask, ask if anyone has any praises, ask if anyone has any petitions or, or requests of God, and then lift those up together and, and hold on to the things that you have with one another and be excited about where God is taking us as we journey uh, next week a little further into the book of Romans and we learn more and more about the signs of hope and how God has placed them in our lives, and how God has turned us even into signs of hope for others. Let's have a, a great week ahead, and I look forward to seeing you in the coming days.